Chaim Malevsky here, live in Boca Raton, Florida. I'm here celebrating Nick Wellner's Bar Mitzvah and his family, and I'm actually in, in their family uh, area. This is, a, this is a golf course. I couldn't find another place to run in. It's just a few minutes before Shabbos, so we're going to rock on real quickly. So a couple days ago, I was on the subway, and I saw a little note, a sign on the subway wall that said, Masks are for everyone. I mean, no, masks are like opinions. Everyone should have one. Masks are like opinions. Everyone should have one. Okay, so not getting into the mask issue or, or whether or not we need them or everyone should have one. But the idea is that everyone has a different opinion and we are all different. And, uh, you know, we know very well what divides us, what separates us from one another. We have different opinions, we have different looks, we have different tastes. And what, what unites us is the question we're addressing over here in this week's Parsha, this week's running commentary. How can we, despite our major differences in life, how can we, despite our differences, be united? So, at our Shabbat table, or in school, when we get together with people, when you meet somebody on the subway, you meet somebody wherever you meet them, you know, we feel a kinship. We feel we're, we're like a family. We're Jewish. What unites us, what binds us, what tells us that we're together is technically it's the Torah. It's the Torah that binds us, that connects us. But the Rebbe over here challenges us to go a little bit deeper. And so it's not just what connects us, but what is it that can truly unite one Jew with another? How can we truly be united where we actually melt away the differences, where we don't feel separate anymore. We feel like one with the other. The Rebbe said many have tried and failed or had temporary results. But what is, where in the Torah do we find true unity? It's in this week's Torah portion when the Jewish people were camping at Mount Sinai, about to get the Ten Commandments. And the Torah describes, Vayichan Shem Yisrael Neged Hahar. The Jewish people camped opposite the mountain or at the foot of the mountain. And Rashi says, using the terminology that the Torah uses, is Vayichan. And he camped, meaning there was one person that camped. And Rashi says, yes, they were truly one person. Ki ish achad belev achad. They were like one person with one heart. They were, there was true unity there. There was no quarreling. And the Rebbe says, what is it that brought about this ability for true unity? Because they were neged hahar. They were all about to receive the Torah at Mount Sinai. They were experiencing a godly revelation. And says the Rebbe, this is a lesson for us, truly, that the only way to true unity is if we, the way to melt our differences, to close the gaps that we have naturally and ideologically and environmentally, etc., etc., is if we literally surrender ourselves, we let go of ourselves, and we go and receive the Torah. Just like they did, we can too. And what does that mean, and why is that? The Rebbe explains further that when the Jewish people camped at the foot of the mountain, they opened themselves up to an experience that allowed them this unity, because true unity, says the Rebbe, can only come from a place of unity. Who is the, there's only one who is truly only the one and only, and that is God Almighty. God Almighty is the one. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. God is one. Hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. There's only one that is truly one. So for us to be one, united, we need to connect with the true unifier, the unifier of all things, and that is God. And we see that in the very first word of our Ten Commandments that God gave to the Jewish people. The word was, 
Anochi Hashem Elokecha. I am God your God. Said God to the Jewish people. Anochi, I am, is an acronym. That's what Zohar says. It's an acronym for Aleph Nun Chaf Yud. Ana, Nafshi, Ksavis Yehavis. I, my soul, re- wrote and transferred. I have written my soul, says God to you, and I have transferred it to you. In the Torah, God transfers us himself, his essence, his unity, the power to unite. And that's why we're able to unite there at Mount Sinai. And the Torah encourages us and urges us and says that when we learn Torah today, the way to achieve true unity today is also to let go of our egotistical hang-ups and even our educational uh, teachings that tell us how we're really all independent and we're, we make our own way in this world, etc., etc., and each one is different and everybody needs to look out for themselves, etc., etc. We have to let go of that and connect to the one and only God and then we can also unite with others because when you surrender yourself, there's nothing interfering between you and another person. That which interferes is only our ego, is only the part of us that when we focus on ourselves. This is the basic idea of the Dvar Torah that I want to share with you. And now I'm going to dive in for another few minutes, something a little bit deeper, where I have no idea where I am now. This is the first time I'm here ever. It is a beautiful place, and I hope it's okay to run here. Um, so... The Rebbe asks the question, he says, this concept of unity, we can understand. God gave the Torah at Mount Sinai, and he gave actually everything about the Torah. He gave at Mount Sinai everything that was ever to be taught. The written law, the oral law, and the Jewish laws. Says the Rebbe that we can understand this concept of unity when it comes to the written law, where there are no disputes, where there's no, where there's no, there's no arguments. Everyone knows these are the words of God and no one's, are, no one's disputing it. We can also understand when it comes to halacha, the Jewish law, that everyone pretty much keeps the same halacha. But how about when it comes to the oral teachings, like the Talmud and the Mishnah, where there are so many differences of opinions, mainly the Talmud. Like, and he gave an example, Beis Shammai and Beis Hillel, or Hillel and Shammai, were two great leaders of the Jewish people, and their yeshivas were leaders, but they were always arguing. Ask the Rebbe, how, where do we see unity in the arguments? And the Torah encourages us to use our brains and use our mind and intellect and cognitive abilities to tackle the Torah and to understand it best. And we have this understanding that Ein Deyoseim Shavos, that nobody, no two people think alike. And if no two people think alike, then why, how can we claim or be united? How can we claim the ability to be united and how can we be united also? So that, that's the question that the Rebbe poses. So the Rebbe says that if we go back to the experience at Mount Sinai, everything was given at Mount Sinai, including the oral tradition. But he says, what happened at Mount Sinai? First of all, the Jewish people said, Naase v'nishma. We will do and we will listen. First we will do. So they accepted upon themselves that whatever God wants, we're in. No matter what my mind thinks, says, or agrees or disagrees. That's number one. So there was a subservience. There was a bitul that the Jewish people had. And no matter what their opinions are, but they agreed, they accepted upon themselves. Further, taking it further, the Rebbe says, Parcha Nishmatan. The, the Midrash says that every, at every one of the Ten Commandments, the Jewish people's souls were actually um, fled, left their bodies. So the souls left their bodies. The intensity of the moment, of the, of the um, I don't know where I'm allowed to run, on a golf course. I've never been to a golf course before. We'll see what happens. Um, the intensity of the moment was so powerful that their souls left their bodies. 
so much so that they asked Moshe. I said, Moshe, we can't handle this. We're all going to die. Please, you talk. And let God go back to the heavens. Anyway, so the Rebbe says that this act of their soul leaving the bodies was an act of mysterious nefesh, of complete self-sacrifice, that the Jewish people were, were initiating their ability and their desire to do what God wants no matter what. And the Rebbe moves on to, back to Hillel and Shammai. These two people and these two schools of thought, Beis Hillel and Beis Shammai, they argued about everything, but they argued until there was a conclusion. And they both understood that whatever the conclusion will be, the other will follow the opposing side. In action, there was no dispute. The dispute was only until the action, the halacha, was concluded. Says the Rebbe, this is what the gift that God gave us and that we assumed for ourselves at Mount Sinai, where there's true unity in the end result. And in the process, we can argue and disagree, and it's totally fine. But there is true unity in the end result. I, I, I see a blue heron sitting on a duck. I don't see this too often, but I thought I'd share this with you. I'm gonna turn this, turn this camera around. There's a little pond over here. I don't know if you can see it. This bird. It's a blue heron. It's sitting on a duck. Literally. It's standing. This is so cool. I know I'm getting distracted, but it's God's beautiful world, and I want to share it with you. Um, if you're on audio, you won't be able to see this, but in video, you will. Look at that. Okay. Oh, okay. Anyway, I'm going to get back to the thought over here. Um, I thought that was beautiful. I'm going to conclude with uh, what the Rebbe concluded. And the Rebbe said that the bottom line was that our connection to the Torah and to God through the Torah, there's three rings. There's God, the Jewish people, and the Torah that binds us, that connects us. So our connection is lemala mitam vadad, is above our logic and above our understanding. And therefore, it can, through the Torah, God invested himself in the Torah. God is the source of unity. We can also, when we connect to God on, and learn Torah, the way they did then, ma, la, ma, just ma, whatever, hasam, the way it was over there, that we learned Torah with trepidation and with utter respect, and so too we do it today, then we can achieve unity with others. It'll help you in your relationships with your friends and your family and your spouses and me too. And finally, the concluding thought, the Rebbe said there's a very famous quote in the Talmud, Al Yipater, and he brings light to it a beautiful way, Al Yipater Adam Echavero, Ela Mitoch Devar Halacha. A person should not leave, should not say farewell, say goodbye from his friend to his friend um, without uh, ending off with a halacha, with a Jewish law. So the Rebbe asks, why doesn't it say Dvar Torah? Why doesn't it say that when you say goodbye to your friend, when you farewell, you know, you're visiting somebody and you're going to say goodbye, why don't you end up with a Dvar Torah? It doesn't say Dvar Torah, it says Dvar Halacha. Halacha means a concise, already concluded Jewish law. And the Rebbe explains, because in the Dvar Torah, there are many opinions, and you might argue with your friend about the opinions. But in halacha, there's only one way, there's only one right way at the end of the day which to follow. And therefore, the Rabbi continues the, the quote in the Talmud, mitoch kach zuchrehu. And through this, when you find something that unites you with your friend, which is a dvar halacha, a, a thought of the halacha, a, a Jewish law matter, that unites you, and you'll remember him and or her in a positive setting and say, yes, this was a pleasant farewell. And just missed one last, last point, but the Rebbe said that in, a, in the, the Ten Commandments, it says, you know, it starts with very lofty, lofty ideas of Anochi Hashem I am Hashem your God, 
what and all the ramifications of that. And then he moves on and says, goes all the way down to Los Ahmod. Don't be jealous. Don't be jealous to what? To your wife, to your friend's wife, to your friend's our items, to his donkeys, to his things, to his toys. The cholasher lerecha. Everything that your friend might have. So the Rebbe is saying that our commitment at Mount Sinai to God wasn't only in the lofty spiritual matters. It was the commitment of Mesiras Nefesh, of our soul leaving its body, was also in the seemingly mundane areas. Don't be jealous of your friend's stuff, of his, uh, you know, his toys and his tools and his, uh, and his pets, etc. So basically, and that is all, again, the uniting factor that we are connected through God, through the Torah, to God, and as intense our connection is. That's how intense and strong our unity is horizontally with other people. God bless you all. That's it for today. I'm in Florida, and that's why I'm doing this here. I didn't even know where I am, but we're having a bar mitzvah. We're celebrating a bar mitzvah, the Walner family, and you're invited. God bless you.